we don't live in a, a formally Marxist state. No. There are many, many good things and, and there are so many good Christian values that would have the assent of millions of people in this country. Yes, I, I, I appreciate that. But I think um, this again is, I think, to, to perhaps undervalue uh, what grand, the grand skin strategy is, uh, that of non-coercion. So the, uh, up till relatively recently, it's been non-coercion, uh, but very effective. He said through teacher training, uh, most of the subjects are framed in this particular way. So people are actually being prepared uh, to um, uh, softened up, if you if you like, for a move from a non-coercion to a coercive. Uh, situation. I think that's what we're moving into now. So you just think about it. Um, uh, say the non-platforming business that's going on. I mean, who would have thought it that, uh, for instance, Germaine Greer, you know, the Dion of, of feminism, um, uh, is now declared to be a non-feminist uh, because of her view on transgender. Same with uh, J.K. Rowling. Um, and um, the uh, the, 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 what you see uh, again with the Black Lives Matter, that if you do not take the knee, then you, or, or, declare, or, or verbally declare that uh, Black Lives Matter, then you are a racist. And so you're being pressurized and forced into saying things that you don't necessarily believe. Um, and, um, and so I think, although it's not as bad as it probably could be or may be in the future, is still pretty bad. And although we have the, you know, the sort of Christian roots there, I think it was also Guinness said that basically we are now a cut flower generation, that the flower's being cut and, and we still got the, the petals there, if you like, and the soft and colorful and a bit of, bit of scent as a leftover from the Judeo-Christian worldview, which is the basis of our society. But with the, with the roots being cut, that can't last very long, much longer. And what's going to come in, the, in, 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 in place? So what's happened to the church? The church is basically, uh, well, it depends what you <laughs> mean by church. Um, but, but I would certainly say from the Church, church of England, uh, the Church of England has been captured. The, I think certainly the Methodist Church has been captured. The Church of Scotland, I think, has been captured as well. Um, and this shows itself in a, in a number of ways. So I think most of the House of Bishops, although some of them won't, won't even know what cultural Marxism is. Uh, I mean, some of them I don't think know what Christianity is, but there we are, it's another issue. Um, but, but, but the narrative they're brought into is exactly the same. When you listen to what they're talking about, even the Archbishop of Canterbury said he wanted to repent of white privilege. Well, white privilege, again, is part of the neo-Marxist uh, narrative, um, the um, <coughs> promotion of the, uh, the gay agenda, for example, again, that flows out of this inclusivity and all the rest of it. So uh, you hear an awful lot of, uh, of what effectively are uh, sort of neo-Marxist tropes being trotted out by uh, the bishops, for example, um, uh, and that those things are clouding the authentic gospel or the gospel is wrapped up in, in what is effectively cultural Marxism. So in the light of this situation, do you have hope? And, and what should Christians be doing? Yeah. Uh, well, I always have hope because I'm a Christian. And uh, if you believe in the God of the gospel, then this is the God who is all powerful, the God who uh, can do the impossible. Um, <clears throat> and he will be bringing about, he is bringing about his good purposes for his people and for his glory. Um, but how that will work itself out is, is another issue. But what Christians need to do is to be, um, to be prepared, um, to be informed, which is one of the reasons why I wrote the book, to be willing, to, uh, to be discipled properly so that they understand both God's word and God's world and bring the two together in critical engagement. And, and that's primarily the responsibility of ministers and pastors. Um, but everyone needs to get on board uh, with this. Um, and also to, to work together where we can, um, like with an uh, organization like Christian Institute to support organizations like uh, CI and Christian Concern and others uh, to make a stand to show that there is a different way and a, and a better way to argue the case. There will be a price to pay, but Jesus said that will be the case. But we've got to pay it. 
for the sake of God's glory, for this, the well-being of, of, of people, and for the sake of our children and grandchildren and future generations.